Alrighty, thank you so much for your participation in this survey. Um, continue to fill that out. I'm going to go through the introduction quickly here before I actually look at those results. So you do have a couple more minutes if you haven't had time to fill that out yet. Alrighty, by way of introduction, my name is Paige Allen. I'm a product pro here at Lucid. Um, I have worked at Lucid Chart for several years now, and in my time, I have learned a thing or two. So I'm excited to share some of my favorite tips, and I'm particularly excited for this webinar where I get to share uh, all my favorite tips for creating process flows. Um, we will be using Zoom for today's tool. So you'll notice you can hear me, but I cannot hear you, and that is by design. So. Throughout today's training, if you have any questions, please drop those in the Q&A. And I will get to those periodically throughout the training, and then we'll also reserve about 15 minutes at the end for live um, Q&A if you have additional questions. Um, if you have any comments or if you uh, want to share something with everybody else, please feel free to drop that in the chat. Now, if you use the chat, please make sure it's turned to all panelists and attendees. That way everybody can see your questions or your comments. And so if somebody else has a similar thought, you can kind of collaborate there. And last but not least, we will be sending out a recording of today's session. So keep an eye out in your email in the next 24 to 48 hours. We'll be sending this out to you so that you can go back, rewatch it in your own pace. Um, maybe if it's helpful for a coworker that you wanna share it with, that's great. And um, feel free to share that out as well. So keep an eye out, you'll be receiving that here shortly. That said, let's talk a little bit about what today's session is going to look like. First and foremost, we want to help you get inspired with um, different pro tips for process flows. What are some best practices and things you can be doing to take your process flows to the next level? And then how can you accomplish those things in Lucidchart? From there, we're going to go ahead and go through the process of building out a flow chart. From creation and tips and tricks for being more efficient and building your flows faster and really optimizing your workspace, to once you kind of have the bones of that diagram, how do we do some mass formatting hacks, make your diagram look really pretty and on brand, um, and then from there, how are we actually using those diagrams, making sure that they're being adopted and communicating with our coworkers. And last but not least, we will be diving in to taking it next level, and we're gonna talk about some more advanced tips and tricks for process flows. So how can we create um, diagrams that have layers and compare current state versus future state? How can we make our diagrams dynamic and several other um, tips and tricks there? So stick around, we're excited to have you with us, and that's gonna be what we're covering today. So before we get started, of course, let's talk about those um, eight different process flow tips and then how Lucidchart can help you accomplish those things. All right, uh, tip number one, formatting hacks. Now, when you create a workflow, you put a lot of time into building it out. And the reason why you're building it is because it's important. So what you'll find is um, stylization and having good formatting does matter. If you have a really flat black and white diagram, nobody's going to look at it and the chances are that it's going to disappear into um, all of the other documentation you've created. So we're going to go over some formatting hacks today to help you build diagrams that are really pretty, that are on brand, that have formatting that means something and will help increase that adoption. So formatting does matter. Tip number two is streamlining collaboration and easily being able to uh, share recommendations and feedback with your team as you're iterating on your processes. And creating and iterating processes is not a one person job. It usually involves different stakeholders and making sure that everybody that's going to be implementing that process uh, has access to that. So we're gonna talk about um, how you can make at mentions and shape specific comments in Lucidchart so that you can actually um, leave comments on specific parts of your workflow. And when somebody comes into the diagram, they can see exactly what you're talking about. Very helpful for creating that communication. All right, our third tip today is assigning meaning to your formatting. So if you have colors, if you've got different line styles, um, that shouldn't be something that's just frilly and there for no reason. Um, assigning things, assigning meaning to your formatting will really help increase clarity in your process flows. And then creating a legend where you can see what that meaning is. So that way as you go forward and create new workflows, um, you can continue to use that same formatting and create standardization. So when people come into a workflow in the future, they'll know exactly what different formatting means and it's going to be easier to create that clarity. So you can see here are some examples, um, maybe if you have different line styles um, or formatting that actually have a 
proposed meaning. All right, our fourth tip is adding clarity by presenting your diagrams to your team. When you are um, iterating on your process or if you're presenting a new workflow for your team, being able to actually walk them through that is really going to help, again, add some clarity. So you can actually build presentations in Lucidchart so you can walk through step by step different parts of your flow, highlight specific um, steps, and make sure that everybody is aligned and on the same page going forward to actually adopt that new process. All right, our fifth tip is making your diagram accessible to everyone in a central location that is always up to date. Now, uh, one of the pain points I'm sure you're all familiar with is going and creating this workflow. Um, you have your process diagram, you spent all this time creating it, you put it um, out in an email or whatever it is, and then nobody can ever find it. And so when they actually need it, they're reaching out to you with emails or Slack messages or whatever it is, and you're constantly sending out your workflows so that people have access to those documents. If you keep that somewhere where everybody knows that that's where they go to access it and that it's always up to date, it's going to make that so much easier for everybody. So with Lucidchart, you can actually embed your diagram in places like Confluence, or if you have an internal wiki, you can use our embed code. So that way it's going to be always up to date and in a central location for everybody to access. All right. Now getting into a little bit more of the advanced functionality, our sixth tip is comparing your current state and your future state on top of each other rather than side by side. As you make those proposed changes, if it's very clear on the same diagram what you're proposing, then it's a much more powerful visually for people to digest. So what I mean by that is here's an example of a current state diagram. You can actually add a button in layers, and we're going to talk about how to do this today, um, where you can see what that proposed future state looks like. Now, if these were side by side, they would not be as uh, powerful, but being able to see those changes as they're made on the diagram really, really is clear and powerful um, as you are proposing those changes. All right, tip number seven is making your process flow a single source of truth. So what I mean by that is oftentimes when you're adopting or implementing a new process, there are going to be a lot of resources that are relevant. Whether that means you have um, articles or a Google Doc with documentation or emails or whatever it is, if you have to go to all these different places to find the information you need, chances are um, it's gonna be a lot harder to adopt that process. And people are gonna get lost and confused and it's gonna take a lot of time for people to actually do what you want them to do and implement the process. Now, if you have one diagram that's a single source of truth and it includes all of those things, it includes your sub processes, it includes your documentation, people are much more likely to use that. So this is an example of a diagram that's actually interactive and it links out to a bunch of other resources so that everybody can come to this diagram and not have to worry about um, going all over the place for what they need. And last but not least, um, connecting your process flow to data and applying conditional formatting to gain uh, insights in real time. You can actually uh, monitor your process, if you will, and identify things like, what are the bottlenecks? Um, what things do we need to adjust in our process to make it as efficient as possible? So in Lucidchart, you can actually link your diagram to a spreadsheet data. And um, you can see here, we've got icons that are applied with conditional formatting. So if there's different bottlenecks or parts of our process that we need to look at, it's going to signify and let us know that with these icons. So we can really quickly and easily gain those additional insights and come in and iterate on our process. So very helpful for kind of taking it to the next level and uh, making your process flows come to life and really usable. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna jump into Lucidchart. I'm just gonna check on our, um, on our little survey quickly. If you have not time yet, I'll drop another link in there for you to fill it out and we will get started here in just a second. Alrighty, as I mentioned before, um, really building out your diagram is gonna be the first phase and we wanna be sure that we can do this in a really efficient way because you're gonna be building out many, many workflows. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I would do this if I was building out a workflow with some efficiency tips so that you can do this really quickly. 
Now, when I'm building out a process flow, the first thing that I always do is pull out a swim lane. Now, a swim lane is going to break your flow into different phases. So whether that means different departments or leading different parts of the process or maybe different locations, having that swim lane is really helpful for breaking your flow up. So you'll notice that in your shape library, there are no swim lanes. We actually need to go and find that, which is totally easy. Just go ahead and select the search functionality. We'll type in swim lane, click go, and we can go ahead and pull our swim lane shape onto our canvas. Now in Lucidchart, swim lanes are special shapes. So at the top of your screen, you'll have this gray ribbon that appears. From here, we can go ahead and add more lanes. Maybe we want four lanes. And then we can also do just like every other shape in Lucidchart and click and drag on the blue to resize that. So we have our swim lanes that are looking really great now. We can go ahead and align them by clicking and dragging. Um, and there's a couple other things we can adjust here. If you want to adjust your text orientation, you totally can. You can also change your swim lane orientation if you prefer for those lanes to be uh, vertical or horizontal. And you can also adjust um, the colors here. So maybe you want your headers to be a light gray. Maybe you want to change your lanes to be a light gray. Um, I like to actually change the opacity here. So that way it's going to be an even lighter gray um, and really kind of uh, different from our headers. All right, now you'll probably continue to use swim lanes going forward. So what I want to do is actually create a custom shape library. Um, and I would recommend doing this for you as well if you're building out workflows. Having a um, set process flow custom shape library for all of these things to live. So let's go ahead and come to our shapes cogwheel here. We're going to come to my libraries and click plus. And we're going to go ahead and title this um, our process flow library. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, when you're promoting standardization across your org, it can be really nice to use the same shapes for the same things. So we'll go ahead and turn on this share so that way our team can also use these shapes we're creating um, going forward. Now we'll go ahead and see that the shape libraries appeared in our toolbox and we can start adding the things we want to use. Now my little tip for you guys here is if we right click, we can actually add this to our custom shape library and add it to our process flow library or we could call this our workflow swim lane, for example. And now we've given our shape a name. Where we, and the reason why this is so helpful is going forward, if you need to find that, you can jump back into your search functionality here and type in workflow swim lane. And Lucidchart will pull that up for you. So really helpful, again, for increasing efficiency. We can find those shapes really fast. We don't have to search for swim lane in the future. It's going to live in our process flow library. So really helpful um, going forward. All right, now we want to go ahead and start um, building out our diagram. So we'll come over to our toolbox, drag our shape onto the canvas, and our tip here for building things really quickly is rather than dragging shapes onto your canvas like so, use these red nodes to quickly build out your diagram. You never have to leave the canvas. Um, super fast here. You can just drag from these red nodes you see that appear here and build things out really quickly. So we'll go ahead and build this out. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, it took us like two seconds and we built out our whole process flow diagram really, really easily. Um, so those red nodes are just gonna make things happen a lot faster. They're unique to Lucidchart and you can build out your whole diagram without ever leaving the canvas. Now, most likely you probably don't want this line pointing to the side of your process shape. So we'll just go ahead and click that line and we're gonna drag the endpoint. Go ahead and select it. Oh, sorry. All right, we'll go ahead and click that line and drag that endpoint. I do not know why it's struggling. Let's try this again. All right. Okay, there we go. Drag the endpoint to the top of our process flow and you are all set there. So again, just click and drag and you can move that endpoint wherever you'd like to move it. All righty. Now, um, let's say you decide you actually want to change this process step to being a decision shape. Totally fine. All you have to do is right click and select change shape. And again, you don't have to leave the canvas. Really easy for you to make adjustments to your diagram. So right click, select change shape, and you'll see Lucidchart pulls up the same shape library where we can make those adjustments. Now while you're really quickly building things out, as you start adjusting things like text, you might find that your shapes start being maybe misaligned, maybe they start being a little bit different sized, um, and you want to quickly and easily line everything up so it looks really nice. 
all you have to do is hold down that shift button and select the shapes you want to change. Now, I selected this shape last because it's the one that I like the best. I want everything to match to this shape. So whatever you select last is what everything will match to. From there, we'll right click. We're going to match our width and height um, of our shapes. So you'll see they've all matched to that last shape we selected. We also want to align them um, to the top so they're all gonna be lined up nicely. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and distribute those horizontally so you can see now they're spaced really nicely, everything's lined up and it looks really good. Alrighty, now um, as you're building this out, another little tip for building things super quickly is if you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can create exact replicas of shapes and build things out super, super fast. So if you wanna just make replicas of your shape and build things out really quickly, again, hold down that Alt or Option button and you can build out your diagram very fast. All right, now once you kind of have all of your uh, phones built out, we'll go ahead and start adjusting text. Now to edit any text in Lucidchart, just double click. So we can say step one, step two, for example, and you can do the same with your swim lane. So double click here, we can say this is our sales team or our CS team, and now we're able to easily and quickly edit text. Additionally, you can add text anywhere by double clicking. So we can add text here if we'd like um, by double clicking. And same with our lines here. Just double click and you can add text and click and drag that anywhere you'd like it to move. Okay, talking about text, something that will most likely come up in building out process flows is you might have different steps or stakeholders that you wanna list on parts of your flow. So if we go ahead and double click here, so we're editing our text now, if you want to move to the next line, hold down shift and enter, and you can uh, start typing here. Shift and enter, and you can type here again. All right, now um, you might wanna also adjust your text. So if we come up to our properties bar, maybe we want to align that to our upper left. Maybe we want, we want to add things like bullets. Um, that's gonna be helpful as you're creating lists. And again, as you hold down shift and enter, um, it will create new bullets. Alrighty, I'm gonna stop for a second. It looks like we have a couple questions and then we will continue on. Okay, looks like we're doing good so far. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, some other shapes that are really helpful when you're building out um, workflows are things like timelines. A lot of folks like to add a timeline so that they can see um, exactly what different parts of the quarter or the month different steps should be happening. So just like we did before, we'll come to our shapes cogwheel here and we'll go ahead and type in timeline and turn on that timeline shape library. Now timelines are special shapes just like the swim lane shape was. So we're able to uh, click and drag. Uh, you can create a block timeline if you'd like or a line timeline. We can also point out milestones and intervals. So let's go ahead and drag our timeline onto our workflow here. Uh, maybe we wanna resize it by clicking on those blue lines where we can uh, click and drag. So now it's going to be the same size as our um, as our swim lane, and we can change things here. So maybe we wanna make it a block timeline or a line timeline. You can have actual official dates. You can change your markers to being quarters, or maybe you want it to be weeks um, or months. You've got a bunch of options here. Uh, you can also change your format of your labels if you'd like, and uh, you have several other options here. When do you wanna start your timeline, things like that. So now you can see we've got a timeline that's associated with our our diagram and we're good to go. Now, timelines might be something you're gonna to continue to use in your process flow creation. So if you go ahead and right click that again, add it to our custom shape library, we'll select process flow and we'll say our workflow timeline here. So now you're gonna see it's going to appear here in our custom shape library so we can continue to use that going forward. Now, a couple other shapes to just kind of point out as you're building out workflows. You'll notice that we have our flowchart shapes that we've been using, and when you hover over them, you'll see these different titles will appear, letting you know kind of in flowchart notation what those shapes are used for. We also, if we come again to 
for a Shapes Cogwheel have a VPMN 2.0 Shape Library that's going to be up to date with the most uh, recent version of process modeling notation. And so these are going to be special shapes that when we drag these out onto our canvas, the same ribbon will appear at the top of the screen. And we can assign things like um, what task type it is. We can also assign these little icons that let you know kind of what happens here. There's different activity markers um, that you can apply and multiple activity markers. So that way everything that you need is going to show up on your shape. Um, so again, very helpful for, um, for building out your diagrams. And we can drag out any BPMN shape and they're gonna have, uh, and this is kind of helpful for walking you through BPMN if you're new to it. It's going to have whatever um, tasks or events or icons are associated with that step in your process flow. Alrighty, and last but not least, I wanna walk you through how to really optimize your workspace so that way it's going to make things easy for you as you're building out your diagram. So I always start with my toolbox and I like to reorder this with whatever shapes I'm using the most. So we know we're gonna be using these process flow shapes a lot, so we'll go ahead and click, drag that to the top of the canvas, or to the toolbox, and you're all set. Um, I probably won't use these shapes, so we'll go ahead and close out, and we can also collapse shapes. So that way our toolbox is really optimized so that you can easily click and drag shapes we know we're using. Additionally, we can uh, change some different page settings to make diagramming uh, a little bit quicker for us. So let's come over here to our page settings option. And I wanna point out a couple of things. When you first come into Lucidchart, you'll have your grid turned on. So you'll see these different lines that are gonna be really helpful as you're kind of building out your workflow. But when you go to actually present that or, or implement that workflow, go ahead and just turn that grid off and it'll make things look really crisp and clear and a lot nicer for you. You also have this snap that's going to um, either be helpful or frustrating depending on the diagram you're building. Essentially, if we zoom in, you'll notice when we move this process shape, it's going to snap to the different lines in our grid. If we turn that off, you can actually manually move it um, to different parts of your shape, of your line. So you can see we can move that without that snapping. So we'll go ahead and click that and we can move it without it snapping to um, different lines. So depending on what you're doing, it will be helpful to use one or the other. All right, we'll turn off our grid. Um, something else to point out here is um, when you automatically come into Lucidchart, you will also have your auto tiling turned on, which means as you build out your workflow, Lucidchart is going to expand to uh, fit all of the content you have. So you'll see the canvas is growing um, and fitting all of our content. If we turn that off, you will actually have control over um, fitting your canvas to your content instead. So it's just gonna make things look a little bit better and more manageable as you're building out your workflow. You can also adjust that here with these little arrows if that's easier for you. And you can adjust your page style as well to being um, landscape or portrait. And you can of course fit your diagram perfectly in your canvas by clicking this fit button. Alrighty, I just wanna make sure that we covered everything. Um, a little keyboard shortcut for you here is as you're navigating around your canvas, if you hold down this space bar and, and scroll on your mouse, you can zoom in and out or click and drag. And if you use two fingers, you can also do the same, um, zoom in and out and use those two fingers to navigate rather than using these nav bars on the bottom and the right. So again, hold down the space bar um, or use those two fingers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop for questions for a second and we will start talking about stylization.
All right, the last thing I want to show you here before we move on is how you can uh, lock things to your canvas so that they don't get in the way. So you see we have our swim lane here. Now, if we're trying to edit um, our diagram and we accidentally keep clicking on it and moving it, it would be very frustrating. So what you can do instead is come up to our little lock icon on the top right corner, and you can actually lock that to your canvas so it's no longer interactive. And that way you don't have to worry about moving it as you're building out your process flow. So I like to lock things like our title down, um, so that way we don't have to worry about moving them as we make adjustments. Uh, last little tip for you here is maybe you want this line to be curved instead. Come up to our line options here, we can select curved and now it's gonna look just a little bit better. Um, we can make those adjustments. And you can use these little blue arrows to um, kind of resize what that curve looks like and make it look however you would like. All right, let's talk about how we can really establish consistency when we're building out our diagrams, how we can kind of mass format them and make them look really great so that they are more easily adopted. The first thing I like to do when I am changing the stylization of a diagram is change the color of the canvas. So I come over here to the page settings button and we'll see our color option where we can change our canvas color. Now I like to use a light gray and I like to also change the opacity. So that way it's a very light gray, but I think it just adds a little bit of richness to your diagram and makes it look a little bit better. Now, as you can see here, we've got two examples of diagrams. This is what a lot of people create. It's very flat, black and white. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people won't actually look at this diagram. Uh, it's not very fun to look at. It doesn't look very professional and it's very kind of flat and boring. As compared to a diagram like this, that's got colors um, and you can see that they have meaning, different parts of our flow of different colors. Um, and so it's helpful to look at that there. Let's kind of look at how we can start formatting our diagram to look really nice like that diagram we have in the corner. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to mass format um, our diagram here. So I don't want to change my swim lane shapes. So let's go ahead and we're going to select our swim lane and come up to our lock option and we're going to lock our style and our content. So that way the colors and formatting and the text will not change when we change everything else. Um, then we'll go ahead and come up to our uh, select option at the top left corner and we're going to select all of our shapes. Now I like when all my shapes look similar to we have in our diagram here. They're all kind of a light gray and we can go even lighter again by changing that opacity here, make them a little bit lighter. Um, we'll go ahead and select them again. Sorry, we'll select all shapes. We'll make them that light gray and we're gonna change our opacity a little bit. And then we can also change our lines. So we'll go ahead and select um, all of our lines. And you can see that um, our lines here actually um, don't have a border, they're transparent. So let's go ahead and we're gonna come back to all of our shapes. We wanna change the line style here, we want them to be transparent, and you're good to go. So now that stylization has applied. But it looks like it's really kind of hard to see what's happening here. So let's apply some colors to make it uh, a little bit easier to follow. Now, um, one of my favorite things for stylization is making things really on brand and using a color palette. I am not a graphic designer by any means, so using a color palette is going to make it really easy to make your diagram look nice. So either bring a color palette in from your company so it's on brand, or just come to the search functionality here. We'll type in color palette, Click go and select images. So Lucidchart's going to pull in a bunch of color palettes um, from Bing that we can actually go ahead and use. We'll give it a second here to load. All right, great. Now it's as simple as just finding um, the colors we'd like. We can click and drop that onto our canvas. Now, um, when you're using a color palette, it needs to be on the canvas to work. So if you put it down here, not on the canvas, it will not work. You need to make sure that it's actually on the canvas. The next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and select our shapes. So you can select a shape and hold down shift to select all the ones in this row. We're gonna come up to our fill color here, use this eyedropper, and it looks like we started with darkest to light color. So let's go ahead and select this dark color here um, and we can edit our text if we'd like. 
Maybe we like black text better um, and make those adjustments. We'll do the same thing with this next row. Again, hold down shift, select all of the different shapes here, come up to our um, fill color, use that eyedropper, select the next color. We'll do it on this row. So again, select our shapes, come up to our fill color, eyedropper, and then we'll go ahead and edit our last row. And shift, color, eyedropper, and the lightest color. And you can see that that's already made a huge difference um, in our diagram looking much, much better. And we can edit things like our swim lanes as well. So let's go ahead and we will unlock those swim lanes so we can edit our content again. And we can select things like the swim lane and we want our header to actually be the color of the shapes. And we can do the same here. We want our header to be the same color as these shapes. We'll edit our header here again to be these shapes. And last but not least, we'll change our header to being these shapes. All right, and look at how much better that looks. You can see really quickly and easily, it was super fast to format. It looks really great. The colors work well together and they all signify different things. Now, uh, my biggest tip for you here is to then create a legend that lets you know what those different meanings are for different shapes. And so you can continue to promote standardization in the future. So to create a legend, it's really easy. Um, let's go ahead and save this color palette so we can use it in the future. We'll drag and drop it into our custom shape library. You can go ahead and delete it now. And let's put a, uh, a legend here. So we'll go ahead and just grab a flowchart shape, drop it onto our canvas, and we'll delete the text by double clicking and pressing delete. We want our fill color to be transparent, and we've got a line that's around it. Now maybe we want to add text that says legend, for example. We'll select the text, let's make it a little bit larger so you can tell that it's a legend. We'll change our alignment to being the upper left. And now we've got a great legend. You can make your legend long if you'd like um, and have it along the border of your um, diagram or whatever you'd like to do with it. All right, now we'll use our little hack we did earlier where we hold down the alter option button to create copies of things. So we'll go ahead and hit alter option and we'll bring all the different stylization colors onto our diagram we need. Okay, and then simply just double click to add text. So maybe we wanna say um, something so that the sales team owns it. We can go ahead and drag that text here to let you know that that's what that means. Um, and you can continue to add titles for things. So maybe we have um, our CS team that owns it and we can click and drag that here. So now we know what different stylization means. Now, um, something else that helps to add some different stylization is to change things like your lines. So we can go ahead and select maybe all the lines in our diagram and maybe we want them to be dotted or light gray. And now you can see that all those lines have adjusted. So we can do the same thing here with our legend. We can click Alt and select this and drag it. Maybe it might be locked. We'll go ahead and just recreate a line. So we'll go ahead and draw a line here in our legend. And we are going to select this line. We will copy our style. We're going to come to this line and paste the style. So now we've got that dotted line we're using in our legend and we're all set. Okay, um, you can also change the formatting for your borders of your shapes. So maybe you want to have a black line that's dotted that means something for some shapes as well. So helpful for just kind of adding formatting. Now I'd recommend saving this legend as a custom shape. So now you've got your legend here so you can continue to use that going forward. Okay, something that a lot of folks like to do is when they have different parts of their process coming together, um, maybe it's one phase meets another, maybe it's one team and another team overlap on working that on that phase, um, gradients are a great way to signify that. So for example, we have this shape that has all three teams that are kind of coming together. What we'll do is come up to our fill color here and we're actually going to click on this linear option. If you don't see it, you'll see this more. Click on more and select linear where we have three different colors. So we're gonna go ahead and use this first color here. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the second color as the second team. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the third color as our third team. So you can see all three teams are kind of coming together here. You can alter the gradient to go sideways if you'd like, um, or uh, you can have it go horizontal, vertical, you name it. It's just going to help to kind of show you that multiple teams come together um, at that part of your process. 
Now, of course, you can save a gradient if you'd like here in our, uh, in our legend, and you can do the right click to copy style and right click to paste style um, so you don't have to recreate those gradients, just to make things a little bit easier for you there. Alrighty, I think that that is all I wanted to cover here so far for formatting, and let's go ahead and jump into our collaboration tips. I am going to stop for a second for questions, and we will continue on. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, how you can collaborate a little bit more efficiently or better when you are working on a process flow. So um, my favorite thing to point out is typically you'll be asking coworkers about different parts of your process. So what you can do is simply right click, select add comment. You're able to actually at mention somebody. So I could at mention Angie, meaning she's gonna get a notification. She has a comment on this shape, click comment. And now when Angie comes into the document, uh, she can simply come over to comments, click on this pin locator, and it will take her directly to whatever uh, shape I asked her a comment on. So helpful for really streamlining that communication process and making sure everybody's on the same page. Additionally, you can add things like notes by right clicking um, and selecting add notes. So if there's additional context for parts of your process, um, this is a great way to add that. So you can see that maybe this process step has additional notes here. Um, for adding clarity to your workflow. All right, um, last but not least with communication, we wanna make it really easy to uh, kind of let folks know what phase we're on in our, in our workflow creation. So if we come back to our documents page, we can actually select this more option here and assign a status. So we can let folks know if, our, um, if we're pending a review on our iteration of our workflow, um, maybe it's been approved, and um, maybe it's a high priority and people need to be adopting this process, we can go ahead and let folks know whatever we'd like here. Alrighty, now moving into our last section, we're gonna talk about how you can take your process flows next level. So particularly what I wanna talk about here is how you can compare current state and future di state diagrams really, really easily. So what we wanna do is come over to our doc on the right, and we're gonna go ahead and select this layers option. Now we wanna create a new layer and we're gonna go ahead and call this our current state of our diagram. So we'll go ahead and double click out of our layer so that we're in our base layer and this is our current state. So we wanna move this over to our current state layer. Let's go ahead and we'll select this diagram. We're gonna right click and select move to layer and we're gonna move that to our current state. Then we can go ahead and click plus layer and we're gonna have our future state. Now, when you start pulling things onto your canvas, they're gonna be much more vibrant. Um, so that's how you know you are on a new layer. You can also interact with base layers. You can see here, we can draw lines to different layers. Um, so that, that's a great way to kind of um, iterate your process. Now, um, we'll go ahead and double click out of that layer. And last but not least, maybe we want to remove we wanna see what it'd be like if we removed part of our process. So in that case, we'll go ahead and double click. We're on our base layer. We're gonna, um, we'll actually jump into our current state layer because we wanna use this current state diagram. We're gonna right click. We're going to copy this to our remove process layer. So that way, um, and we'll go ahead and we're gonna line everything up. We're gonna be able to show you what it's like if maybe we remove these center steps here um, in our diagram. Alrighty, now to kind of clean everything up, we are gonna hide all of these layers and click sync visibility. So when you come into your document, you won't actually see anything. Now we need to create buttons to turn on those layers. So we'll go ahead and pull out a process shape and maybe we wanna see our current state. We wanna see our future state. And we wanna see our um, remove process. Okay. Now, um, to turn these into buttons, all you'll do is navigate to this little actions link, where we're actually going to um, go ahead and toggle layers. Toggling means you're gonna turn a layer on and off. So it's gonna work like an on off button. And we want to turn on and off our current state with that button. So we'll go ahead and click done. And now when we press this button, it's going to turn our current state on and off. Here we wanna do the same with our future state. So our little keyboard shortcut for you, command K will open the actions button. 
And here we want to uh, maybe show our future states and our current state. So we'll go ahead and click done. And when we press this button, it's going to show the future state and the current state. Maybe we want to turn off our future state when we press this button. So let's go ahead and we're going to add an action to make sure we um, hide our future state when we click that button. So now it's going to hide that future state. All right, and our last step is our remove process. So this is where show and hide come into play. We want to show our remove process and we want to additionally add an action to hide our future state and our current state. So go ahead and click done. Here we're able to toggle that current state on and off. Here we can turn on our future state so you can see that future state's applied. So maybe we go ahead and we turn on our current state, turn on our future state. And you can also click this remove process button and you'll see it's going to remove parts of our process. So that way you can kind of see all the different aspects of um, kind of creating your diagram where you can see removing part of it, adding it, um, and all the different ways you might want to use layers. Now the great thing here, if we'll go ahead and actually move this a little bit lower, so it's not in our way here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off of all of our layers. Um, you can save these as buttons in our custom shape library. So when we pull them out, they will still have those actions. So a great way to kind of um, make that process a little bit easier for you. All right, let me see where we're at with time. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Um, let's talk about how you can make your buttons look interactive. Um, what I recommend doing is coming up to your shape options button. You can actually turn on a shadow so it looks a little bit more clickable and then add something like an interactive icon to make that look really interactive. So that way people know that they should click on that button and that it's going to, uh, to do something. All right. I also want to talk to you about how you can break your larger process into a sub process. So let's go ahead and we'll turn on that current state. Now um, we have a sub process here on another page and we want to be able to link to that. So all we need to do is simply click on a part of our process. We'll do the same command K keyboard shortcut and we're going to link to a page. And here we're going to link to our sub process, click done. And now we can click on that and it's going to take us to our sub process and we can go back to our main process here. So helpful if you want to break your processes down so that way you only have relevant information for certain stakeholders and your process flows don't get uh, super overwhelming. All right, and last but not least, um, I want to show you how you can create uh, a great title for your diagram. Simply come up to your insert button and you can insert the um, date and time your diagram was created, maybe when it was last modified or who it was last modified by. Um, I like to do the page name. So we can see whatever name uh, of our page it is down here at the bottom. I also like to insert when it was last modified. So that way we know when it was uh, most recently updated. And then of course, these are going to auto update as things change. And we can go ahead and save those as a custom shape so we can use them going forward on other diagrams. All right, I know we covered a lot today. So if you forget anything, this feature find will be your best friend. It will show you where everything is. So you could type in things like those auto updating fields. You can type in things like um, layers, for example, or action links. And Lucidchart will show you exactly where those all live. Um, that said, I'm going to go ahead and launch our last poll. If you'll go ahead and let me know how I did today. Um, we're always wanting to do better. I'll of course stick around for the next uh, 15 minutes or so to answer questions, but let us know how the webinar went, what your thoughts were. If you have additional feedback, feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, and thank you so much for joining us.
All right, and great question. We will be sending out a recorded copy of today's webinar. So keep an eye out in your email. You should be getting that in the next 24 to 48 hours. Thanks again so much.